This conference will now be recorded. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is uh, the, another link to our task today. Uh, so we'll start by Dr. Manikam. Uh, I will adjust the two, uh, the 10 minute now, okay? Yes, sir. Hello. Stop. Uh, hello, Mrs. Mary. Uh, I am Manikam, in charge of ST5 in charge of Gynec Clinic today. Shall I confirm your name? You are Mrs. Mary Jones now. You are 35 years. Is it? Yes, Mary Jones, 35 years. Uh, how can I call you, ma'am? Mary you can, call, you can call me Manikam. I, okay, I have come to know from your details that you are positive for Roka 1 and two and you have come here to regarding the removal of your tubes and ovaries to decrease the risk of ovary and carcinoma and breast cancer and before that shall i talk to you shall i collect some data from you so that it will be easy for uh, both of us to discuss and come to a conclusion and i will examine you in presence of the chaperon with your consent and uh, I'll do some patient leaflets also, and I'll discuss the things, and both of us will come to a conclusion. And I'll make an appointment with my consultant for you to come to a conclusion. Shall I proceed? Or am I clear, ma'am? Am I clear, Mary? Okay, doctor, no problem. Can you mm -hmm. adjust your connection, please, Dr. Manikam? Adjust yes. your connection because there yes. is uh, some interruption. Yes. Is it now okay, sir? Yes. Can you tell me about your any problem that you're having now at present? Yes, doctor. Uh, uh, doctor, my mom has an ovarian cancer, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, she tested positive for this cancer gene. I'm very worried, doctor. Uh, and uh, her, uh, my specialist doctor uh, advised me to do this screening test also, and I came positive. So I'm very worried to have this uh, cancer. I'm very worried, doctor, and I wanted to have this surgery. Anybody in your family being affected with this uh, genetic condition? No. I just to interrupt. Anybody in your family having this condition? Yes, my, my mom. My mom has this cancer and she and did surgery. Yes, she did surgery and to remove all things. Remove her womb, remove her tubes, ovaries, everything. I'm sorry for her. How she is now? Is she okay now? Yes, yeah, she is fine now, but I am very worried to have this problem also. Is she doing all follow up for the breast and all? Yes, doctor. Okay. Do you have any problem with your breast? No, I, I, I didn't I didn't check my breast at all. Uh, tell me, please tell me about your menstrual history. Your periods are regular. Yes, my period is regular and you come every twenty eight days and last one since one week. Do you follow any contraception, ma'am? Uh, yes, doctor. I use Marina. You uh, finished your family, is it? How many yes, children you got? How many children you got? Yes, I have two a two vaginal delivery and I complete my family, yes. Oh. Yes, you're having Marina. It's a it will it will be a good protection for your uh, cancer of the womb also. There won't be any possibility of developing cancer of the womb, it will be protective in nature. That is a good uh, thing you are having. And uh, did you use I any contrac oral contraceptive that is pill for your contraception before? No. No, no, I didn't use oral contraception. Did you, did you have any uh, medical history? Do you have any treatment with your GP? No, at all, doctor. Any surgery you have undergone? No, at all. Do you have any allergy? No. Uh, you, you, uh, do you mind me 
asking a few questions about your uh, sexual behavior, nothing like that. Okay, doctor, no problem. Okay. So do you have any history of sexually transmitted infection? No. Uh, don't smoke. Do you take alcohol? No. Any drug abuse? No. Are you aware of your blood group? Oh, positive. No, oh, your BMI, your body mass index? Yes, 28. Very good. And uh, any other problem you have got? Are you well supported in your home? Yes. And uh, what do you do for your baby? Housewife. You are happy with the family, no? Yes. And anything else you want to tell me? Again? Anything else you want to tell me? No, at all, doctor. But doctor, I want to tell you that also my sister has breast cancer, okay. and she did Sorry. surgery for that. Sorry, did you do breastfeeding for your children? Yes. Oh, thank you. Very good. That's a protective factor for you. And uh, something I wanted to ask you. Any other thing you want to tell me? No, doctor, at all. Uh, did your GP uh, has taught you about self examination of the breast? No. 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 Okay. Doesn't matter. You can do that also. I teach you. Okay. So shall I proceed for the discussion? Do you have any other blood tests or anything with you? You don't have any other reading as no? No. Okay. As you completed your family, uh, I'm going to tell you some few things. I want to summarize your uh, you finished your family at your 35 years, you don't have any illness, you don't have any surgeries also, you are positive for data one and two, and your ma mother is being affected with the cancer ovary, your sister being affected with the CA She's okay, no? She's okay, She's no? Okay. Yes, she is okay now. Okay. So it is better for you. As you completed your family, at the age of uh, for break of one, we advise after finishing the family to undergo the bilateral uh, salping operatomy. That means the removal of the tubes and ovaries through the uh, small bone surgery. That is uh, not a big surgery. And uh, after that, if you are willing, you can undergo. This itself uh, halves the risk of developing cancer breast. If you are wishing, there is another surgery called removal of both the breasts. That also can be done. And uh, for this surgery, you have to be in the hospital for uh, some two to three days. Before that, you have to do undergo some investigations. Anything else you want to ask me? Am I clear? Yes, doctor, you are clear. So, any risk during this surgery? Any test to be done before this surgery? Yeah, so you have to do basic investigations like full blood count, then uh, blood sugar. Like, if you are not having that, but even then, uh, they'll be doing some investigations and x ray chest will be doing, undergoing. Doctor, is there any risk to have ovarian cancer uh, now? One thing, and I one don't thing know. I have, uh, sorry, I don't think that I am interrupting you. Did you have any cervical screening? I have forgotten to ask you. Yes, my my I, my cervical screening program is up to date and normal. Doctor, oh, any sorry. risk to have ovarian cancer now? I and I uh, don't know. The risk of ovarian cancer is more in the. Persons who are positive in BRCA1 and two positive people, and they develop the cancer at a younger age group, and uh, but they they have a better prognosis compared to the other people. But once you undergo the operation, there will be 98% protection from the, the cancer of the ovary. There is only 2% of development of cancer in the uh, lining inner lining of the abdominal cavity. That we cannot prevent. Uh, this is the this is a safe surgery, but some complications are there associated with the 
laparoscopy or the tissue uh, surgery. There may be some chances of um, very rare chances of uh, injury to the bladder or the uh, water bag that is the uh, urinary bladder or uh, the tube conducting the urine from the kidney. Time so finished. Thank you, sir. sir. Welcome to family. Camp. If you want. This is my Yes, sir, if you want to my, do this. <laughs> sir, this is my first attempt, sir. Uh, no problem, Max. So please put up with me, sir. I should have done so many mistakes. I am going there, here, and there. I am not well versed. Please put up with me, sir. And uh, tell me about my performance, sir. I have to improve so much. I am only in the LKG yes, now. Uh, no, yes, yes. Uh, no problem at all. Uh, and I'm very happy to hear that that this is the first time, and uh, you don't afraid to share, yes. uh, and you get the ability to start. Uh, I I wanted to tell you that some uh, or most of the candidates will be shameful to do that. They will have shame to do that to share in front of another colleagues and in front of another candidate. I was one of the of this candidate really. I, I in the start, I, I when I started to to practice with my mentor, I, I was afraid and shameful. I sent him a message on the private to tell to tell him, uh, please don't uh, ask me to share in the in the sessions. Sure. You can imagine, and this is very dangerous uh, because uh, if you can if you will not share, if you can't share, if you are shame. It, it will affect your practice, your performance. You will, you can't do that in the exam. Yes. Okay, you have to uh, to have self confidence, trust in yourself. Okay, no problem at all to do mistake. Uh, the practice now, uh, the aim of our practice now to do mistake, because this mistake will learn you, and you yes. will avoid this mistake in, in the exam. So when I miss to ask the patient about open question in the exam, I will ask the patient open question. Uh, if I miss to ask the patient about the blood group, about uh, her period, in the, and I make mark about this point, I will write by my handwriting that I, I, I did that mistake, so I will not uh, do this mistake again. So practice is very important and trust in yourself. Okay, uh, this uh, to learn you how to have a self confidence inside the exam. Okay, and this will give you a good impression, uh, give the examiner a good impression about you. If you enter the exam in, uh, in self confidence, trust in yourself. This is an exam, an easy exam, uh, more, more easier than part two. I will do like what I can, what I do in my, in my clinic. Uh, so this uh, will raise your mark in inshallah in part three exam. Part three exam is very easy, but uh, as I told you, need certain uh, certain skills and trust in yourself and uh, practice with your study board. Your performance was good uh, for the first time. You touch a lot of the point of, uh, 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 important in this task really. Uh, you have some hesitancy with the communication with the patient. I don't want, I, I don't want from you to be uh, hesitated like that. Okay, and yes. uh, I, when they give or I talk to the patient, please talk in small chunks and give the patient the opportunity to talk. Okay, this oh. is consultation between you and the patient. So you have to give the patient the opportunity to talk, and the patient. Uh, or, or the role player will guide you during this consultation. Okay, so uh, let her talk, let her guide you, listen to her carefully. She will give you some hints during the uh, consultation. From the start, you greet really introduce yourself well and confirm the identity of the patient. This is very good. Uh, you check the purpose, but uh, you didn't ask uh, uh, the patient. This is uh, her purpose of the meeting. So you you say you tell her that I understand that you are here today because you have one two three four and I wanted to uh, to examine you and uh, offer you ask you some question at the end I will give you patient not all of this you have to check the purpose and stop okay. give agenda and stop okay so when you greet and introduce yourself and confirm the identity. The patient will talk, yes, uh, Mary. Hello, Mary. I understand that you are here today because you tested positive for the cancer gene and you you request surgery. Am I right? 
Am I right? She will say, yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. Okay, so now you can put your agenda. Okay, Mary, uh, I totally understand your concern, but before we'll discuss uh, that, or you be, before we discuss your concern, can I ask you some question to know more about you? And they may examine you in the presence of Chabron. At the end, I will give you some patient information leaflet and the contact number. Is it okay? She will say, okay, look. So you have to confirm the identity of the patient first, check the purpose of the meeting for, uh, uh, second, and they give the patient opportunity to talk, then put your agenda. Sometimes the, uh, the consultation may be not clear in the start. Some candidate from the stress of the exam may uh, stand in front of the cubic reading the information and they, they cannot understand what mean by this information. They cannot understand the purpose of the meeting today, what he will or she will talk inside the cubic. This is from the stress of the exam, okay? Be uh, 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 and uh, even if the task is very easy for you and straightforward for you from the stress and the examiner is inside and someone push you and there, uh, there will be ring, uh, will be bill after, uh, after two minutes. So you cannot understand, cannot understand what, what is the purpose of the meeting. So you can ask here, how can I be of help today? How can I help you today? After greeting and introducing yourself, hello, I am Dr. Uh, Ali, one of the senior doctor in the clinic today, may I confirm your name and, and age, please? She will say, yes, doctor, I, I am Mary Jones. Uh, nice to meet you, Mary, or uh, hello, Mary, like that, okay? Then, uh, how can I be of help today? How, how, I, how can I help you today? This is if the purpose of the meeting is not clear. If you can understand the purpose very well, so you can confirm this purpose. So I understand if your notes is that you are here today because you tested positive for some cancer genes. And you are here requesting a surgery to decrease the risk to have a cancer. Am I right? She will say, yes, doctor. Okay, Mary. Mary, before we discuss the best management plan for you, can I ask you some question to know more about you? And let me examine you in the presence of Chabron, if you don't mind. And uh, and at the end, I will give you some patient information leaflet and give you contact number, arrange another meeting with my consultant. Is it okay? This is how to put agenda, okay? And this introduction is very, very important because if you talk well in this introduction, yes, please mute yourself all. Uh, this introduction is very important because if you do, if you did well, if you do well in this uh, introduction, it will give you self-confidence. If you, if you talk well in this uh, first one minute in the exam, it will give you self-confidence and will give the examiner a good impression about you. Okay, but if yes. you enter the cubic hesitating, how can I confirm with identity? How I check the purpose of the meeting? Hesitated, uh, 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 wrong, wrong uh, uh, grammars, uh, or can't talk English well, not fluent in English, hesitating in asking the question. This will affect you before uh, affecting the the impression uh, in front of the examiner. This will affect your performance in the remaining of the uh, uh, whole 10 mm. minutes. So please try to concentrate on this introduction, okay? To be fluent in this introduction, I will do one, two, three, okay? And this introduction shouldn't exceed 30, 30 seconds or uh, uh, less than one minute. Okay, so this is how to uh, introduce yourself and check the purpose of the meeting and put the agenda. And then come to the consultation. Okay, please, when they start the consultation, ask open question. Usually start by open question because they like this task, the, this type of the question very much, okay? And this is also the first impression about you. This candidate ask open question, so give him, uh, give a chance to the role player to, to talk. Okay, so can you tell me why you did this test? Why? Like you did. You did this very well, Dr. Uh, McKinnam. Sure. Uh, uh, so she will tell you, yes, Dr. My mom has ovarian cancer and she tested both for these genes. And also I advised to do that uh, uh, that test. And unfortunately, I came also both So I wanted to have this surgery. I'm very worried, doctor, to have this cancer. Here, your communication with the patient. Okay, you have to show sympathy like you did. Okay, but I wanted to feel from the, your tone of voice. Not, it is not word, we will say only word, no. 
your communication, your feeling, okay? So you, you have to raise your communication in such sympathy. I'm so sorry to hear that. How she is right now? It changes the tone of your voice. It changes the tone is very important. Don't be monotonous during the consultation. We are not uh, keeping or uh, only saying some information to the role player. No, this is a com this is communication. And as I told you, the one who can communicate uh, good in part three exam, who is the one can pass part three. Applied knowledge is is important, but communication is very very important. Sometimes you may have no applied knowledge about the task, and you still can pass if you did communication well with the patient. Okay, so I'm so sorry to hear that. And how she is right? How she is right now? She said yes, doctor. She is fine. So a change in the tone of your voice is very very important. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, have she offered any treatment for that? She will said yes, doctor. She offered surgery. Okay, how she is right now? She is fine now, doctor. Here you can uh, you have to ask the patient about any warning sign, any signs or symptoms of ovarian cancer. Okay, do you have any pain in your tummy? Any weight loss? Any loss of appetite? And this is to ask about any uh, possibility of the cancer. Okay. Then you ask about the, the breast, and I told you that I don't uh, do any breast uh, examination at all. I didn't check my breast at all. You cannot pass this point, okay? You have to put a stress in this point now, because if you leave it to, till the remaining or till the end of the consultation, you may forget it, and you will lose the mark regarding this. So if the patient or the rule player raise certain concern, you have to put stress on this concern now because because of the stress of the exam you may forget. Okay, so mm -hmm. Mary, you may examine your best regularly and check for any lump, any discharge, any change in the control. And if any of these, you have to seek a medical advice. Am I clear? She will say yes. Okay, doctor. Okay, this is how to ask about the history of the present illness. Usually, our our template is start by the history of the present illness. Okay, then come to the remaining history. You ask about the obstetric history. Very good, but I wanted to, from you to ask by open question. Ask open question and one by one, be organized. Have you ever been pregnant before? She will say, she will say yes, doctor, I, 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 I been pregnant two times and delivered the two times a vagina without any complication. Very good, the rule player will tell you everything. Okay, so give her opportunity to talk. If the role player didn't mention any information, ask by close the question about this information. But usually start we we usually start by an open question. Have you ever been pregnant before? She will said yes, doctor, two times. Okay, and did you complete your family? This is very important question because you will offer the patient bilateral salpingoflectomy, so the patient will not be able to pregnant anymore so did you complete your family she will say yes doctor I, I i already complete my family very very good okay then go to the uh, uh, the remaining history gynecological history you ask about the period but please ask open question could you tell me more about your period the patient will tell you everything about the period yes doctor uh, my period is regular and the every 28 days last one since seven days very good that's enough okay do you use any contraception uh, she will say yes, Dr. Marina. Cervical screen program is very important. You 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 touch at this point at the end. No problem. No problem. At the end, in the start, in the middle, no problem. The most <laughs> important that you touch. You will take the credit for this cervical screen program. This will be considered to patient safety. So if you didn't mention at the whole consultation, you will lose a mark. If you mention it at the beginning, at the start, at the middle, you will will take the credit. But from the stress, also you may forget if you put it in the hair in the in, in its usual uh, site. Usually, we ask uh, the cervical, cervical skin program in the gynecological history. So, put this after the, the period contraception. So, I will ask about the cervical screening program, not to miss it. You you ask about the sexual history, very good, and you sign both for yourself, no problem. This is very good. If you ask about the sexual history, you have to sign both. 
for yourself. I'm so sorry if you find my question intruding. Do you have any problem with sexual intercourse? Like that, okay? Uh, then you ask about the medical. Surgical history is very important here, and you cover this point, because if the patient have multiple abdominal surgery, multiple surgery, so the, the laparoscope, as you know, we will offer the patient laparoscopic bilateral salpingoophrectomy, so the laparoscope may be not suitable for the patient will put her at risk of the failed entry, intestinal injury, bowel injury, like that. So ask about the surgical history is very important in this task um, also. Also medical history is uh, important because if we offer the patient hormonal replacement therapy also, uh, after that, if the patient has a history of thrombophilia, clots will affect her, uh, her, okay. uh, her management plan also. You ask about the smoking, alcohol, recreation, drug, but you ask in multiple questions. Please don't do like that. Ask one okay. by one. Do you okay. smoke? She will say, no. Do you drink alcohol? No. Do you use any recreational drug? She will say, no. Okay, one by one. Okay. Okay, you cover this as a support at home. Very good. You may uh, ask here about the psychological history because this patient is worried and she has a horrible story. Her mother and her sister uh, passed through a difficult time. So you may also cover the psychological history. It be, be, may be relevant here. Okay, so some, Mary, some women may find it is very difficult to cope with that. Do you feel that you wanted to talk with someone regarding this? I can refer you to expert person who can talk with you regarding this difficult time. She would say, okay, doctor, that will be very fine for you. That's nice, like that, okay. Family history is very important. Please don't miss family history in like case. In such a case, don't please family history. You, you touch the family history. Okay, but if you touch the family history, please be, uh, please be mute yourself. <laughs> Dr. Sarah, mute yourself, please. <laughs> Dr. Sarah, yes, okay. Uh, uh, when you ask about the family history, if you specify for which we ask, it will be also very good. It will give uh, the, um, a good impression in front of the examiner that this candidate is very organized. He know uh, what is the important uh, point he wanted to touch. So if you ask about family history of uh, cancer in the womb, cancer in the breast, any clot like that, she will say, yes, doctor, my sister has also breast cancer. Again, sympathy. I'm so sorry to hear that. And how she is right now, she will say, fine, doctor, she did surgery, mastectomy, and she is fine now. And she is tested also both for these genes. She will say, yes, doctor, she is tested, and she is also busted for this cancer gene. I'm so sorry to hear that. Sympathy. Sympathy is very important. Nonverbal communication, your facial expression when you talk, you when you say, "I'm so sorry to hear that." Your facial expression, not only word we say. Communication is very important. Okay. Do you want to add anything? This is very important question because if we miss any information, we miss any point to ask the role player. We may prompt you um, to tell you to tell you about this point. Like this uh, rule player today, she prompt and she, she said, yes, doctor, uh, my sister has cancer uh, in breast and she did surgery like that, like that. Okay, then come, don't forget please examination. Examination will be also considered as a part of information gathering, okay? So come to examine the patient in the presence of chaperone after taking the consent and the hand hygiene. So Mary, I want to examine you in the presence of chaperone. If you don't mind, this is how to take a verbal consent of the patient. Okay, if you don't mind, this is how to take a verbal consent. So Mary, I want to examine you in the presence of Chabron if you don't if you don't mind after doing a hand hygiene. This is to shake your pulse, blood pressure, temperature, to shake that you are in best possible shape, and examine your tummy to see any pain, any mass in your tummy. Is it okay? She will say, okay, doctor. Okay, now come to the uh, uh, the consultation, okay? The aim of the consultation. This patient came today because she requests uh, risk reducing surgery. So you can ask her about her background. What do you know about, Mary, I'm so sorry. What do you know about breast, uh, about ovarian cancer? She may have some misunderstanding. She had uh, misinformation. 
so you will collect this information okay so you can ask this question to ask about patient about that background or you may come directly to explain for here what what mean by by ovarian cancer what is the risk of uh, of hair to have ovarian cancer okay mary having ovarian cancer may happen about one in 70 women at any point of the life and uh, this risk is increased if a family if the patient has a family history especially if this family member tested positive for this cancer gene like our task today as some of these genes may run in families called hereditary cancer syndrome am i kidding so far she would say yes doctor give small information and she can understanding okay as being a booster for this uh, cancer gene BRCA1 and the BRCA2 this also increases the risk of the ovarian cancer to about 35 to 45 percent so we recommend for that woman to have a surgery to decrease the risk to have an ovarian cancer and that will be done by removing the tubes and the ovary am i clear she will say yes doctor here you can draw you can draw for the patient here is your womb oh. here is the tubes here is the ovaries okay we, to reduce this risk mary will remove this and you will point on the ovaries and these tubes Drawing is very important in a communication with the patient. Okay, so when you enter the cubicle, they will give you a, a notebook uh, yeah. and they will give you one pencil. Okay, so this is uh, to write some information in front of the cubicle as we talked before in the introduction uh, uh, for part three. Uh, when you start, when you stand in front of the cubic and you read the instruction, you will write some uh, information. And what is the most important point you want to discuss with the patient? When you enter the cubic, okay, and during the consultation, you can draw for the patient during uh, by using these papers and this pencil. So drawing is very important. It will deliver the information very quickly to the uh, to the patient. Okay. So you can draw, this is the womb, here is the tubes, and here is the ovary. We will remove both tubes and the both ovaries, like that. Am I clear so far? She will say, yes, doctor. Okay, then now come your applied knowledge about the uh, risk-reducing surgery. Okay, uh, we, do, we will do some screening test before this, before, this, uh, uh, before this surgery. This is by some uh, protein called the CE125 and vaginal ultrasound scan and this to evaluate the presence of ovarian cancer as uh, mary some may have an ovarian cancer at the time of the surgery this is a question the patient asked you may i have ovarian yes, cancer now doctor may i have ovarian cancer now and i don't know you may you may uh, uh, respond to the patient or answer the patient by this mary we will do some screen test before the surgery and this is by CE125, certain protein which increase in half of the women who have ovarian cancer. And also a transvaginal ultrasound scan. And this to evaluate the presence of ovarian cancer. As uh, uh, unfortunately, at the time of the surgery, four in 100 may have this occult ovarian cancer. Am I clear so far? She would say, yes, doctor. At that time, Mary, at that time, we may, know, we may need to do another surgery. We may do. We may need to do to 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 do staging laparotomy. So you will be given Mary patient information leaflet and the consent to sign before this. Okay, as as there is some risks which may happen during the surgery, uh, like bowel injury, bladder injury, uterine injury, and the blood transfusion. Okay, this is uh, regarding to the uh, consent uh, before the surgery. So the patient should be given patient information leaflet before the surgery and also should be given a consent to sign before the surgery okay discuss with the patient the risks that may happen like bowel injury bladder injury ureteric injury and blood transfusion and as we mentioned sometimes we may find an cancer at the time of the surgery at the time we may do another surgery at all it will be staging laparotomy okay this is uh, the risk of occult ovarian cancer Mary, this is type of the surgery can be done by Cahill surgery. Explain for here what is the Cahill surgery. Where telescope containing camera will introduce your through your tummy under general anesthesia to remove the both tubes and ovaries. 
this surgery will not eliminate your risk it will only decrease the risk to about 69 sorry 96 percent because sometimes the cancer may arise from the surrounding and this is the residual cancer about four in four percent four in 100 you miss a very important point to discuss with the patient the hrt this patient is still at the age of the 35 so we remove her po uh, her ovaries the source of the hormones the source of the estrogen uh, uh, hormone so this patient will go in mini booze mini booze surgical mini booze so what you will do for this patient okay what you will offer for this patient you have to discuss this point you can't go outside the cubit without discussing this point mary yes. after removal of the both ovaries there will be a drop of the hormone secreted by this ovaries and this hormone is very important to, to keep your bone strong and to prevent the menopausal symptoms like hot flashes and also it keep your mental and sexual health so you will be referred to the menopausal clinic to discuss with you the suitable hormonal replacement therapy am i clear so far yes if the time allow you the role player will ask you doctor how i can decrease my risk to have breast cancer also my sister has breast cancer i'm very worried about that to have also this yes and as you know as you know this patient is BRCA positive BRCA1 and BRCA2 so she also at a risk to have breast cancer so having this surgery by itself decreases the risk of having breast cancer so bilateral salpingoflectomy by itself decreasing the risk to have breast cancer also she will be advised to follow the breast screening program she may be offered non-hormonal option for the menopausal symptom as you know the hrt which contains progesterone will increase the risk to have breast cancer the the hrt which contains progesterone so this patient may be offered non-hormonal option at all she may be offered the hysterectomy at the time of the surgery to give her estrogen only as you know the estrogen will not increase the risk of the breast cancer the only the one the hormone which increases the risk of the breast cancer is the progesterone so now i wanted to give this patient only estrogen so what i can do i will remove the womb to give her estrogen only because if i give her estrogen only and she still have uterus she will have endometrial cancer after that because the estrogen will be exposed to endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer so how can i decrease decrease this i this patient at risk of having breast cancer so i i don't want to give her progesterone so i wanted to give her estrogen only so how i can give her estrogen only and she have uterus so we can remove the uterus at the time of the surgery so hysterectomy can be done and give in give only estrogen uh, also she may be given the hrt till the age of the 51 and she may be offered the prophylactic mastectomy and given after that a combined the hormonal replacement therapy no problem at all she may be offered also prophylactic mastectomy remove the breast to decrease her risk to have breast cancer take care also her sister may need this surgery beca because there is a hereditary cancer syndrome hereditary so that her sister also at risk to have this when she complete her family okay at the end, at the end, uh, the communication is also very important here to give the patient uh, patient information leaflet to arrange another meeting with the, with the consultant, give her contact number, okay, if she has any query at all to call you. This also will uh, uh, raise your communication with the patient. It's okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very okay. much, sir. Thank you Thank very you, much for sir. your chance. Thank you. Thank you for Thank you. you. Sir. Thank you sir. Okay, this is very important to talk about risk reducing surgery to decrease the risk of the epithelial ovarian cancer. I took this uh, uh, information from this uh, talk. Uh, this is the guidance uh, uh, guidance of the management of the woman with increased risk of ovarian cancer, as mentioned there in the talk. Uh, in the talk, uh, there is uh, divides a woman to a woman has increased risk and a woman with a high risk. The woman is with increased risk who have a positive family history, single member only affected, only one single member, and they are not having a cancer gene. This, woman, this family member don't have the cancer gene. So it is negative to the BRCA1, BRCA2, and like that. So at that time, the risk of the woman who, who has this family history is four to five, four to five percent. 
what we can do for this patient we can consider risk reducing surgery can consider okay okay for the high risk woman who is the high risk woman the woman who have a, a family history suggestive of hereditary cancer syndrome what does it mean this means that she has a family history and this family member is positive for this cancer gene so for example her mother has a ovarian cancer and her mother tested positive for this cancer gene so what we can do for this patient we will offer here offer reducing surgery we will offer here the risk reducing surgery they don't recommend at all a screening we don't recommend a screening at all uh, only for the woman who refuse this risk reducing surgery if the woman refuse this risk reducing surgery and she is one of the high risk we may offer them this uh, woman a screening okay so here no evidence to support the screening at all we may offer a screening we may offer a screening to who who decline the risk reducing surgery okay uh, the the patient who have a BRCA1 her lifetime risk is about 35 to 45 percent so we'll offer here also bilateral salpingoophorectomy at the age of the 35 where it complete her family the woman who have BRCA2 her risk is 13 to 20 uh, uh, 23 percent and also will offer hair risk reducing surgery but we may delay the surgery at the time at this type of the woman who have BRCA2 till the age of the 45 okay because the onset of the cancer here will be delayed so we can delay the surgery till the age of the 45 take care there is on, uh, another also cancer gene called hereditary number versus cancer colon which increase the risk of the breast cancer ovarian cancer and womb cancer and the colon cancer so this patient will be also at risk to have a womb cancer or endometrial cancer so we'll do bilateral cybangiophorectomy with hysterectomy with hysterectomy okay okay this is some information also from the this the same talk when we offer the patient hysterectomy when we will offer the patient hysterectomy also in addition to the bilateral salpingoophorectomy, very important information you may be asked in the structure discussion. We will offer the hysterectomy if the patient has this one hereditary non-bulbosis cancer colon, the one called the Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome or hereditary non-bulbosis cancer colon will offer the patient also hysterectomy because this patient will be also at risk to have endometrial cancer. Some women who have this BRCA1 or BRCA2 may need to take tamoxifen to decrease her risk as a chemoprophylaxis to, to, to prevent this breast cancer. So she may need to take tamoxifen to decrease the risk of the breast cancer. As you know, tamoxifen may increase the risk of endometrial cancer. So at the time, if the patient wanted to take tamoxifen, we may do also hysterectomy. Okay? Okay. If the patient wants also to take estrogen only, the patient is afraid to have a breast cancer, so she doesn't want to take progesterone. She wanted to take estrogen only. So at the time, we may give her estrogen only, but before that, we will remove the uterus. So three situations, we will remove the uterus. Uh, if the patient has Lynch syndrome, hereditary number of the cancer colon, if the patient wanted to take tamoxifen, if the patient wanted to take only estrogen as a hormonal replacement therapy, okay? This uh, some... Uh, information about the preoperative evaluation as we uh, mentioned that this patient wanted to do ce 125 and the transvaginal ultrasound because there is risk on uh, there is risk to have an occult cancer about four to eight percent okay uh, the conclusion in this uh, talk mentioned that they don't recommend at all screening for the ovarian cancer if the patient has risk to ovarian cancer so will offer risk reducing surgery immediately any questions so far Sir, the uh, LNG I use that also protective, no, sir. That Again, the Marina also will be protective, no, sir. For the cats and endometrial. Marina the, will be protective. Endometrial protection, Marina. sir. Yes, sir. Marina will be giving endometrial protection, no, sir. Can be endometrial protection by Marina? Ah, yes, sir. That's what I mean. It can yeah, provide yes, 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 okay, Marina is uh, good, no problem, but take care, Marina is also contain progesterone. Okay, no, yes, and, sir. Uh, That's not good for a yes. breast. Okay, sir. 
Thank you, sir. Yes, so take care of that. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, so, so again, I want... Yes, I was talking. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Alaikum salam. Can you see the previous slide, please? The previous slide? Yeah, it was before. Okay. Uh, we can go again. Okay. I want Doctor Doctor Samarin. Are you here? Can you join us, Samarin? Sam Samarin, Doctor Samarin. Doctor Samarin Saraj. Okay. Doctor Rawat, are you here? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, this is your task. I will arrange you two minutes. Okay, sir. Two minutes started. Okay, I will adjust it in a minute. Start. Hello, I am Dr. Vijay Lakshmi, the doctor in the gynae clinic today. May I confirm your name and age, please? Yes, I am Mary Adam, 23 year old. And how can I address you? Mary Fine. Okay, so Mary, I understand that you were having some pain in your tummy and you had some ultrasound and blood tests carried out and you are here to discuss the results. Is it right? Yes, doctor. Um, so Mary, is it okay if I ask you a few questions to know more about you, then examine you in presence of a chaperone 
uh, then we can discuss your results and your further management plan. Is it okay? Okay, doctor. So, Mary, could you tell me something more about your uh, problem? Yes, doctor. I have this pain since, since a couple of months, and uh, I went to my GP. He examined me and offered me this scan and some blood test, and they arranged another appointment with you today to know the result. Okay. So, uh, for how long were you having this pain? Yes, and this was since a couple of months. And was it uh, was there some aggravating factor or a no, no, doctor, relieving not factor? Specific. No. Okay. And uh, I, do you have any problems in your bowel or water works? No. Okay. And could you tell me more about your um, menstrual uh, cycle? Yes, my period is regular, doctor, and last one since one week. Okay, and uh, 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 I, uh, if I can ask you some personal questions just to know more about okay. you, is it okay? Okay. Uh, are you sexually active? Yes. And are you using some contraceptive? Yes, doctor, I use coil. Okay. Uh, Mary, uh, it is always also good that if you can use, uh, you can ask your partner to use a condom because that will protect you against sexually shared infections. Okay. Okay. And Mary, have you ever been pregnant before? Yes, doctor. I, I give it once and I deliver the vagina without any complication at all. Okay. And are you seeing your GP for any other illness? No. Any surgeries done on your tummy or down below? Mm, no. And uh, any uh, family history of significance? Any family history of blood clots? No. Um, are you? What do you do for a living, Mary? I'm a housewife. Okay. And how support at home? Mm, yes, my partner support me. Mm -hmm. That's good. And uh, do you smoke? Ma do you smoke, Mary? No, doctor. Do you take alcohol? Mm, no. Do you take any drugs for recreation? No. And what is your height to weight ratio? 28. 28. And uh, any, uh, what is your blood group? Mm, all positive. Any, uh, any reservations of blood transfusion? Mm, no, doctor at all. Any allergies? No, doctor. So, Mary, is there doctor, any I'm other... Very, I'm, I'm very worried, doctor. Excuse me, doctor. I'm very worried about my test result. Can you tell me what is in the test result? Yes, we'll get get to it. Uh, Mary, just uh, let, uh, let me confirm, complete your uh, information taking, if that is okay with you. Okay. Is there any other information you would like to add to what I have taken from you? No, doctor. Okay. So, is it okay if I examine you in presence of a chaperone while my nurse takes your pulse and BP, Mary? No problem, doctor. Okay. Okay. So, Mary, is there somebody with you today? How are you, doctor? Uh, so, uh, Mary, I... Yes, Mary, I have a little concerning news uh, regarding your results. Uh, is it okay? Should I go ahead? Yes, doctor, no problem. I can cope. Okay, so uh, Mary, uh, on your ultrasound examination, uh, it is showing that there is a, a big bag of uh, fluid in your ovaries that is around 16 centimeters. Okay. 
what is this again, doctor? Bag. And this is a fluid filled fluid filled bag uh, in your yeah. uh, right in your ovary, right ovary, which is around 16 centimeters. And this is a significant finding according to us. Oh my God! It is cancer, doctor. No, oh Mary, it is not cancer uh, as uh, as uh, as of now. But we need to invest. Uh, but we need to go uh, investigate it further in this uh, by doing an MRI and uh, uh, MRI scan to see for any other uh, uh, extensions of this uh, problem. Okay. And what about my test result? My blood test, doctor. Uh, so one of the results called CA125, that is a, 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 home, a chemical which is increased in certain uh, certain ovarian tumors and in other uh, other uh, other uh, benign conditions also is slightly raised. But the good thing is the other uh, markers are absolutely normal. Okay, Mary. Okay, doctor. So this is increase my risk to have cancer also. Uh, so Mary, what we normally do is we calculate the risk of malignancy index uh, uh, by uh, taking CA the values of CA125, the ultrasound findings, and uh, your menopausal status. Okay, since you are premenopausal, so your risk uh, uh, is not uh, is almost uh, uh, risk malignancy index is very low. It's almost zero. Okay, so we are not suspecting okay. uh, an, a cancer as of now, but because of the size of the uh, cyst, uh, it can undergo a torsion. That is, it can turn around on it itself, or it can rupture suddenly. That is, it can burst out any time or there can be some uh, uh, hemorrhage that is the blood could come into the cyst and this would cause an acute emergency at that time so it is preferable that we operate on this uh, ovarian cyst and we also send it for examination to be sure that it is a benign uh, it is not cancer okay so you will remove my ovary doctor uh, uh no uh, mary we will just uh, when we uh, this surgery can be done in two uh, ways one we can do it through a keyhole surgery and the second is by opening up your tummy uh, from the uh, bikini line okay so uh, we are going to see uh, first we are going to uh, when we go inside your tummy we are going to first assess whether it looks like a benign uh, uh, benign uh, benign cyst or does it look like a cancer and, and then accordingly we will um, just uh, if it most likely it should be a benign pathology benign uh, cyst and so uh, we'll just be removing the cyst and we will try to conserve the ovary as as much as possible all right mary Okay, doctor, I want to this K-hole surgery because I know that I will go uh, go home quickly because I am in, I study and I am in the university. So I want to this K-hole surgery. So uh, Mary, I will be consulting my, I will be uh, getting in touch with my consultant and uh, we will discuss as to what would be the best method, uh, best uh, route of uh, surgery for you uh, and keyhole surgery would be preferred like you all because firstly it is your choice and secondly also because it, it is uh, uh, it gives faster recovery and less hospital stay and you can go home earlier and less pain uh, okay but it has its own uh, pros and cons uh, so should I go ahead with explanation of the time finish Okay, okay, thank doctor. you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Okay, doctor. Doctor, I want to ask you one question. Can I delay or can I postpone this surgery till I finish my academic year? Uh, Mary, uh, we it, it is not recommended to postpone the surgery because, like I told you, this acute emergency of it of the ovarian cyst turning around on its, itself, or it it is bursting out, or it, him, or blood collecting in the ovarian cyst is quite a possibility. So, and if we do your surgery by keyhole uh, surgery, then you will be um, you will be discharged the very next day. 
uh, after the surgery if everything goes on fine. Uh, uh, so it would be recommended that you go ahead with the surgery as soon as possible. Okay, doctor. Do you want okay, to me anything, you. doctor? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Lakshmi. Le Lakshmi? Yes, Vijay Lakshmi. Lakshmi. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Lakshmi. Uh, you did the good in this task. Um, you have uh, you touch uh, a lot of point, a lot of uh, relevant point in this task. Really, we'll give you now the feedback. Uh, first, your your communication was uh, in the start was good. Okay. I, um, I feel that you have self-confidence in yourself and trust this is very good, very good really. Okay, just practice, practice more and more and repeat the task more and more. It will be very easy for you. Um, uh, and you will keep the information uh, by your heart. This by repeating the task more and more. Uh, you greet and introduce yourself very good to the patient and confirm the identity. You shake the purpose in a very nice way excellent really uh, but you didn't check the background okay if you uh, have to uh, interpret some investigation if the, the ha you have some investigation outside the cubicle and you come to explain for the patient uh, this uh, uh, investigation this test so you have to ask the patient about her background about this investigation she did she know anything about this investigation anyone told her about this investigation or no to know from where you start maybe the gb called this patient maybe the gb after the test called the patient and informed her that she had a cyst and her ce125 is high and she has a suspicious of cancer like that okay so mm -hmm. she may know about that test. so this will change your consultation this is really change from where you will start okay sometimes in the tumor instead of breaking bad news it will not be at all breaking bad news because the patient already know that she has cancer so how how come to accept to do breaking bad news and the, already the patient know that she has a cancer so if the patient don't know anything about the the, the test result okay you come now to do to if she has cancer, if she has something uh, very dangerous, you can breaking do breaking bad news. But if she already know, you will start another by another point at all. So checking the background is very important. So check the purpose of the meeting, and after that I will check the background of the patient. Mary, do you know anything about the your test? Anyone called you? Anyone told you anything about your test? She will say no, doctor. Okay. Then put your agenda as you did. You did. Uh, you put agenda in a very nice way. Come to the template, our template, our information gathering. You ask open question. Very good. Could you tell me more about this pain? Yes. Very good to ask about open question in the start. Okay. Ask about any 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 factor increases pain. Any factor decreases pain. Very good. You ask about the pressure symptoms of this cyst. This cyst may do pressure symptoms in the bowel in the bladder. Very good. You didn't ask about the malignancy, okay? Um, about the malignant symptom. Did you lose your weight? Did you lose your appetite? Okay, so please touch this point. This will be considered the patient safety. In, in, have you offered any treatment for that? Did you offer any treatment for this pain? Also, this will be cons uh, considered as a part of information gathering. Okay, then uh, regarding again to the communication, you didn't draw for the patient you didn't draw for the patient if you draw it will be very very good okay you come now to explain for here the test results so you will draw for the patient so draw this is the tubes this is the ovary you have here a, a fluid filled cyst or fluid filled space called the cyst like that okay you will come now to explain for you how to to explain that so you didn't draw you give the information small chunks and you check understanding this very good okay you, you negotiate with the patient when the patient told you that i want to postpone you negotiate with the patient and you, you tell her that no, uh, not recommended because this will put her at risk to have emergency surgery this is very good also in the communication of the patient uh, giving the patient patient information leaflet at the end and the contact number also will be considered as a part of the com uh, communication with the patient 
Coming to the information gathering, as I, I told you, you are started by open question. You cover the, the pressure symptoms. You didn't cover the malignant symptoms, okay? Malignant symptoms and signs. Uh, the gynecological history, you ask about uh, the period, open question about the period, but the patient didn't mention at all any pain, any, any pain during uh, with period. This cyst may be an endometrioma. So if you ask about the dysmenorrhea, it will be very relevant. So do you have any pain with your period? So this may this patient may have an endometriosis and this cyst may be endometrioma. So if you ask about the pain, it will be relevant. Sexual history. You sign both for yourself in the sexual history is very uh, this is very important and very good from you. Uh, then uh, ask about the contraception. It was also a relevant point. And regarding to the safe sex or condom, uh, if you say, uh, if you say, uh, uh, how do you protect yourself from catching sexual transmitted infection? This is a better way to uh, uh, to to uh, stress on the safe sex. Mary, how do you protect? She may use condom and she may don't use at all. So how do you protect Mary? How do you protect yourself to catch a sexual transmitted infection? If you want to ask about the, uh, if you have to comment, if you want to comment on the safe sex. Uh, then come to the obstetric history. As I mean, I told you before, ask open question. Have you ever been pregnant before? She will say, yes, doctor, one time for sure. So please ask open question, okay? One uh, open question. Any difficulty to get pregnant, if you ask her about that point, Okay, because she has an endometriosis also, and she may delay it to become pregnant. She has some infertility or like that. You cover the sexual history. This is very uh, sorry. The surgical history this is very good because uh, we will offer the patient surgery by the laparoscope. Uh, so if she has any surgical surgical history, it will make the surgery very difficult. Uh, you ask about the family history, is also very good. She to explore whether the patient is at risk to have ovarian cancer or breast cancer or like that. Okay, so any family history of ovarian cancer, any history of breast cancer, like that. Uh, then uh, the patient push uh, you to explain for her the test result. I come at one point to ask uh, ask me about the allergy and smoking, and I feel that the time is running from you. I feel that the time is running and you still didn't touch the consultation. So the, the role player will prompt you, will push you. So doctor, I wanted to know about my test result. I want to, I am very worried about that. Okay, you have two, two options. In that time, you have two options. Either to come immediately to explain for her the test result. Okay, or to you wanted to go organized and you bought a template for yourself or you bought system for yourself you wanted to finish the history uh, taking uh, in the start so Miri, I, I can see how worried you are and in a moment I will explain for you the test result but if you don't mind I wanted to ask you some question for, or ask you more question to know more about you she said okay talk. okay no problem so you can't miss this point at all. If the patient push you to explain the result, you can't you can't go or bust this uh, this point at all. You have two options: either to come immediately to explain for her the test result, or uh, to go as you um, as you put yourself a, a system for yourself. So you want to finish the history taking. So Mary, I can see how worried you are. And in a moment, I will discuss this test result with you. But if you give me time to ask you some more questions, to more about you, it's very important to me. She will say, okay, doctor, no problem. Then complete your sheet. Okay. Uh, when you come to explain for her the test result, you didn't confirm the identity. This is a, a big mistake in the patient safety. If you come to explain for the patient test, the test result, you have to confirm the identity. Mary, let me confirm your name and the age, please. She will say, yes, Dr. I'm Mary. I am Mary Adam, 23 years old, like that. Or you can say, this is Mary Adam, 23 years old, in HS number one, one, like that, okay? She said, yes, doctor, like that. Okay, so you have to confirm the identity before explaining the test result. Uh, what else? Uh, Yes, regarding to the consultation itself, you your applied knowledge about the uh, cyst in the premenopausal woman was relevant, was good, but no need to break bad news. I I feel that at sometimes you come to do breaking bad news. This is not a, a, a tumor. This is not definitely tumor, 
So no need to break to break bad news. You come to explain for the patient. You come to you can come to explain the patient the, the test immediately without breaking bad news. So come to draw the patient. Draw very important to, to draw. Draw merely. Uh, this can show that you have a, a cyst or a sac in your ovary. I can draw this for you. This is your ovary. This is the womb. Here is the right ovary, and here is a fluid filled space called the sac, called the cyst. And this cyst is uh, unfortunately a little bit a little bit large, 16 cm. Am I clear so far? She will say yes, doc. So drawing is very important. Okay, if you draw for the patient, it will deliver the information very quickly. She come to ask you, doctor, is it cancer, doctor? Is it cancer? You answer the question in a, a very good way. Okay, Mary, it is unlikely to be a cancer in your age group, but we wanted to confirm that by doing more tests like MRI and to remove the cyst and to be examined in the lab, the histopathology. Okay, so you answer this question in a nice way. Will you remove my ovaries, doctor, during the surgery? Also, you, you answer the question in a nice way. And we have an ideal answer for this one. Your ovary is unlikely to be removed. Your ovary is unlikely to be removed. We may, we may remove your ovary in certain circumstances. For example, if the cyst is very large and completely replace the ovary, if the, the cyst is twisted and decrease the blood supply to your ovary, or there is if there is suspicion that the cyst may be cancer. Okay, doctor, I wanted to postpone the surgery till I finish my academic year. Can I? You also answer the question in a very nice way because this system may go in emergency and we may need emergency surgery. Okay, so we may at that time we may remove the ovary instead of removing the cyst. Please, if the patient till uh, till the patient will have her time till the surgery, we'll arrange for her the surgery. So the warning sign. Don't forget to uh, stress on the warning sign, Mary. Till the time of the surgery, if you have any severe pain, if you have vomiting, if you feel that you are unwell, to come immediately to the hospital. Okay, this is regarding to the uh, um, your feedback. And so I will we will go to the suggested model of answer for this task. First, we will greet and introduce yourself as Dr. Alakshmi did. Okay, hello, I am Dr. Ali, one of the senior doctors at the clinic today. May I confirm your name and age, please? She will say, yes, doctor. Uh, I am Mary, 23 years old. Hello, Mary. I understand from your note that you are here today to discuss the test, uh, the result of the test that we requested for one week back for your abdominal pain. Am I right? She will say, yes, doctor. Check background. Do you know anything about the test result? She will say, no, doctor. Okay, before we'll discuss the test result, I wanted to ask you some questions to know more about you. And they may examine you the presence of chaperone and give you patient information leaflet and the contact number at the end. Is it okay? This is how to build the agenda. Come to our template, our information gathering. History of the present illness. Usually we start by history of the present illness. Could you tell me more about this pain? She would say, yes, the doctor, I have this pain since a couple of months and in my lower tummy and my GP requests some this test and arrange an appointment with you to know the test, the test result. Okay, Mary. And do you have any problem in water work? Any problem in opening your bowel? This is pressure symptoms. Okay, then come to the malignancy symptom and sign. Any loss of weight, any loss of, loss of appetite? She will say no, doctor. Have you offered any statement for that? She will say no. Then come to the gynecological history. Could you tell me more about your period? This is an open question. She will tell you everything about her period. You wanted to ask specific about the dysmenorrhea. So any pain with your period? She will say no, doctor. Okay, do you use any contraception? She would say, yes, doctor, I use a uh, coil. Okay, then if, if you want to ask about the sexual history, you have to sound post for yourself. Mary, I'm sorry if you find my question intruding. Uh, are you somewhere right now? She would say, yes, doctor, with my partner. Any, any problem during sexual intercourse? Any pain during sexual intercourse? This is to ask about the dyspareunia because also endometriosis and the endometrioma may be associated with this dyspareunia. Have you ever been pregnant before? She will say, yes, doctor, one time and delivered the vagina. Any difficulty to get pregnant? She will say, no, doctor, at all. Okay. Then come to the medical history, the surgical history, the remaining history, drug smoking, the social history, psychological history, you may ask. And family history is also important to exclude that the patient has a family history of ovarian and breast cancer. 
Do you want to add anything? Thank you for sharing this information with me today. Mary, I want to examine you now in the presence of Chabron, if you don't mind. And after doing hand hygiene, uh, I want to, to assess your pulse blood pressure temperature to be sure that you are in the best possible shape and examine your tummy for any pain, any mass. May examine you from down below to see any pain and any mass. Come now to explain for her the, uh, the test result. Can I confirm your name and date of birth, please? You have to confirm the patient identity, okay? Can I confirm your name and the age and date of birth, please? She will say, yes, doctor, I am Mary Adam, 23 year old. Mary, the scan shows that you have fluid filled space in your right ovary. And this space or this sac is a little bit large, 16 cm. And there is no any other abnormal feature. I can draw this for you. This is the, the, the womb, and here is the tube, and here is the ovary. Your right ovary here has this cyst. Am I clear so far? She will say, doctor, any drawing, any anything, even, even if you can't draw at all, anything, imagine that you draw for the patient anything, but this will raise your mark in the communication with the patient, especially if there is lay examiner. The lay examiner, it is an examiner come from the general public, okay? And he can, he don't have any information. He don't, don't have any knowledge about the ovarian cyst at all. But he show your, he, he, he come to assist your communication with the patient. When he see or she see you that you draw for the patient, this doctor is very good doctor in the communication. This doctor is safe doctor. He know how to deliver the information to the role player, to the patient, sorry. He has, he ha, he know how to deliver the information to the patient. So he can pass in this task. Okay, so drawing is very important really in part three examination. Okay, Mary, also your doctor has requested some tests for you for certain tumor marker, which is a substance increase in certain types of the cancer. Three of these substances are normal, but unfortunately, there is one is high called the CE125. It is about 250. I'm a so far. She will say, What this doctor? What CE125? It is a cancer doctor. This may increase in, in, in some non sinister condition like fibroid or endometriosis, but also it can increase in some sinister condition like ovarian cancer. So, doctor, is it cancer? Mary. Until now, we don't know. But cancer is very unlikely in your age group, and most of the cysts will be benign. But we wanted to do more, more tests to know about this cyst. Okay, and uh, we will remove this test to be examined in the lab. This is the histopathology, the uh, definitive diagnosis. So your care will be under a group of doctors, which include, this is a multidisciplinary team. When you mention the multidisciplinary team, you have to mention who will be there in the multidisciplinary team. Your care will be under a group of doctors, which include the gynecologist, the gynecological cancer specialist and specialized nurse. You will be offered uh, some more tests to know more about this assist, like MRI, and we will discuss the treatment option with you, with you. But usually, we will need you. We will need surgery to remove the cyst. Usually, we, we you will need surgery to remove the cyst. We have two types of the surgery to remove the cyst, in Mary, either by Kehl surgery or by open surgery. But because this cyst is a, a, a little bit large, so you will need an open surgery. The patient told you that I want Kehl surgery. She prompted you to comment on that should prompt you okay take care if the role player say something you have to listen to her listen to the role player don't take this question lightly at all she wanted to tell you doctor you have to stress on this point this point is very important doctor there is there is a credit about this point i want you to take a credit for this point the examiner will uh, raise your applied knowledge or patient safety if you mention this point this is hint from the role player. Doctor, I wanted to have I wanted to uh, have this Cahill surgery, doctor. Can I? This what the patient wanted from you to comment that she the Cahill surgery wouldn't be not suitable for her because the cyst is large. So Mary, mostly you will need this open surgery because this cyst is a, a little bit large. 
Okay, and this surgery will be done by uh, a cut in your bikini line and the, uh, you will be under anesthesia. There are some risks from this surgery, like any surgery, like bowel injury, bladder injury, blood transfusion, and you will be given patient information leaflet and the consent to sign before this Mary. Am I clear so far? She will say, yes, doctor, you are clear. Doctor, will you remove my ovary during this operation? Mary, your ovaries are likely to be removed. However, there are some circ circumstances we may remove the ovary. Like if the cyst is very large and completely replaced the entire ovary, if the cyst twists the ovary and the blood supply is cut off, and rarely if there is suspicion that the cyst may be cancerous. At that time, we may remove the ovary and do another surgery at all. Am I clear so far? She will say, yes, doctor. Will it affect my, my ability to get pregnant, doctor? Again, Mira, I totally understand your concern, but this is unlikely because each woman has two ovaries. And even if we remove one ovary, the, the other ovary can release the egg. Okay, then uh, the histopathology, Mary, the tissue removed will be examined in the lab. Okay, and you will be given appointment to, to discuss the result of this test. Am I clear so far? Yes. Finally, the role player will ask you about the post the surgery. Can I delay the surgery? until I finish my academic year. This also will be considered patient safety. I understand your concern, but I totally, I don't recommend that because this is, is large. At, at any time, you this may get twisted around itself and cause considerable pain, which necessitate emergency surgery. At that time, we may remove the ovary instead of removing the cyst itself. She would say, okay, doctor, Mary, till the time of the surgery, if you feel any pain, vomiting, feeling unwell, you have to come to the hospital immediately. Now I will give you some patient information leaflet and the contact number, and I will write back to your GP. Is it okay? She will say, okay, doctor, thank you, like that. Okay, there's some information from the patient information leaflet, and also it's written there in the patient with uh, brimine, uh, the cyst in the brimenibuzal woman. Uh, as you know, all of you know that if the simple cyst measure less than 5 cm in the premenopausal woman, so ne even no need to follow up this cyst because mostly it will be functional cyst and it will disappear within three successive cycles. So if the cyst is less than 5 cm, no need to follow up this patient at all. If the cyst is simple and between 5 to 7 cm, we can do annual ultrasound scan because if this, but if the cyst is large more than 7 cm, we may do another test like MRI to to can visualize the whole cyst because the whole cyst may be not seen by the entirely by the ultrasound scan and also we may offer surgery for this patient. Any question? Okay, good. Dr. Salma, are you with us? Hello, Dr. Ali. I'm Dr. Asya. Yes. Dr. Asya, I have one question. You? Yes. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ali, uh, why you uh, do not consider this IOTA, International Ovarian Tumor Analysis? In, because, international, international Ovarian Tumor Analysis? Yes. Yeah. Because actually here, cyst ultrasound description not given in detail. Just they mentioned 15 centimeters cyst. So can we go for this yes. uh, iota to see the benign or malignant? Because still CA125 is high. Because for a pre-menopausal woman, less than 40, we can con go for this scoring, B, B role or M role. And after that, we can do this MRI and MDT. Okay, this international ovarian uh, international ovarian tumor analysis can uh, uh, it will be done by the ultrasound and the patient also done uh, did ultrasound scan. Yeah, but actually it is not but clear the, here that because it is it is simple scan done, so we can do we can mention this thing. Or what do you think? I, I think the patient did already ultrasound scan, so we will do again ultrasound scan for her. Uh, I think it will be, uh, from my opinion, not relevant, but you can mention, uh, but go to advanced or more advanced uh, or more, uh, more, more, uh, or another test like MRI, uh, 
it will be uh, suitable. As mentioned there in the green top guideline, if the cyst is large, more than 7 cm, so the patient can do this MRI because the ultrasound scan can't see the, in, the entire cyst because the cyst is large, can't see the whole cyst. No, it will so not be done. We'll do it will not be done transvaginal. Ultrasound will be done transabdominal. Because so when what yes. is the indication of iota? When we will do? Oh, you mean that patient did already scan, but I mean this scan is different. Iota is different because it has it has very high sensitivity and specificity. Okay, you can mention yeah, if you wanted to mention mm -hmm. that, no problem. You can mention this also and uh, uh, the MRI scan. So you can mention this uh, screening by the International Ovarian Tumor Analysis and also the MRI. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one more thing, this CA1, uh, this risk RMI, risk of malignancy index. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we do for uh, this um, pre-menopausal woman? Pre-menopausal, I know this is one score, but um like if because still we don't know this is it is clearly written simple cyst because can we mention here about rmi or uh, no need i i think no need to mention i think if it uh, is a patient in the boston menopause that it will be more reasonable to mention this oh. uh this malignant index okay okay thank you much. thank you very much dr Hassan. okay Dr. Salma, are you with us? Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Okay, this is your task, Dr. Salma. I will adjust two minutes. Okay. Two minutes started. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will add just a minute. Hello, I'm Dr. Salma, one of the doctors in uh, post operative ward today. May I check your name and age, please? Daniel Walson, 26 years. What would you like me to call you? Miss Walson. Miss Walson, how are you after surgery? Fine, doctor. 
is there any pain or um, any temper temperature you have that you want to share today no doctor i'm fine mm -hmm. uh, so dania uh, uh, is it okay that uh, you uh, i i understand that you want to know about your don't, you have some concern don't, don't, doctor please don't call me daniel i i said to you miss Wilson. Miss Wilson, sorry. Okay, Miss Wilson, uh, uh, you have some concern today that uh, you want to share? Yes, doctor. Mm -hmm. So, is it okay before explaining your concern and management plan? If I ask you some relevant question, then in front of Chaperon with your consent, I may examine you. Then at the end, um, I'll explain you your management plan. And if there is any uh, need to retain information, I'll give you also. How does it sound? Okay, doctor, I, I, I told you, I told your colleague before the operation that I want to sterilize, have a sterilization. Why you don't offer sterilization for me? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sorry for that, that uh, uh, about your uh, concern, but you know, uh, the doctor uh, during operation you told or just before? Yes, just before this, operation. Yeah. Yes, but this was my request. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know that um, any uh, emergency situation, like you know that at the time uh, it is uh, your uh, uh, pregnancy outside the Oh, so in this case, any emergency uh, situation, if you take decision, you know that for the sterilization, we, we don't recommend it, okay, because you may regret later on. So that's why, you know, maybe my doctor, the, uh, that my colleague, she didn't agree with you. So it's better beforehand, before two weeks, to if you think that, yeah, you need a sterilization to, we'll take. Uh, concern from you beforehand and you explain everything then you can take decision in better situation am i clear doctor, Mr. Yes, doctor, you, are, you are clear doctor but i i will not think about pregnancy anymore mm -hmm. I, I struggle with my children at home mm -hmm. yeah yes if you think about that so it is better you know if you uh, uh, you know, if we'll take two weeks before or beforehand to give you uh, time to think about that. So, in an emergency situation, it is uh, we, we don't recommend. And I'm sorry that you are uh, concerned about that. Okay, so we can help you that there is a more option later on. You can uh, go for it. Uh, if you want, I can explain you. Okay, doctor. Mm, thank you. So, uh, can you tell me that uh, uh, more about that? Uh, do you have any uh, uh, that uh, uh, wh wh uh, your period is uh, regular? Yes, doctor. My period was regular. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, have you taken any contraception before that? Um, which one is suitable for you? Mm -hmm. uh, doctor, also this I struggle with my partner to use a condom, and he doesn't want, he doesn't like to use this condom at all. Sometimes mm -hmm. he and sometimes no. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Yes, there is any other option also, but uh, you know the condom is uh, suitable for you know to prevent the sexual transmitted infection. Okay, but I'll explain you other uh, option also in a minute. Okay. And okay. uh, yeah, so uh, what about your cervical smear? Yes, it's up to date on normally. Mm -hmm. I can see that you had three children, so how they delivered? Is there any complication? Not all. I have three vaginal deliveries and I have two termination also. Mm -hmm. So how uh, how that this termination, uh, is it medically or surgically? No, it was for personal, personal reason. 
Mm-hmm. But is it done by medical uh, treatment yes. or surgical? Yes, I took mm-hmm. some medicine and I, I explained already the pregnancy. Okay, good. Any complication? No, at all. Okay, good. Do you have any other medical disease that you are following to GP? Yes, doctor. I have epilepsy and I took already uh, levetiracetam and carbamazepine. Mm-hmm. Okay, and uh, so are you following your doctor? Is it control? Your yes, epilepsy? Well control. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and any any medic, uh, surgery before? Mm, no, doctor. Any family history of any medical disease? Mm, no. Do you smoke? No. Drink alcohol? No. Mm-hmm. And do you have allergy to any medication? No. Do you know the height and weight ratio? Yes, 26. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for sharing all information. Do you want to add anything? No, doctor, thank you. Mm-hmm. So um, now uh, coming to your, this management plan, do you have any, uh, you know, that any idea about that other option or I'll explain you all? No, doctor, I, I don't have any idea at all. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you have any preference? Uh, yes, I was preferred to have this sterilization to finish st- to finish thinking about this contraception at all, and I am I am I, I never thought about pregnancy. Mm-hmm. Okay, do you admit uh, there is an alternative um, option also that uh, you know that which one is long term um, contraception? If you want, I can explain you that there is a less failure rate also. Otherwise, I can explain you the sterilization. Okay, doctor, no problem. Mm-hmm. So actually, this sterilization, which one you want, uh, you know that it, it is there is a uh, that uh, uh, I can draw for you. You can see this is your uh, uh, ohm. Okay, this is tube, and this is uh, your ovary. Okay, the so this tube, you know, with keyhole surgery, uh, uh, the doctor will uh, that um, either. And they will put the clip or the uh, like it that you okay am i clear yes yeah so the uh, you know the failure rate is uh, less one in uh, 200 okay the failure rate and you will do the uh, anesthetist will see you beforehand to give you the proper uh, uh, you know anesthesia and there is a you know the anesthetist risks and risks of uh, the surgery that um, uh, the keyhole surgery that increased risk of bowel, bladder, uh, vessel injury, increased risk of blood uh, uh, tra- uh, transfusion if there is a heavy bleeding. And if it has happened, so we'll um, uh, 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 repair by the you know expert. Okay. So, okay, no. and there is an alternate procedure like, you know, the less failure rate also, like um, uh, the, the intrauterine. Uh, device that means the coil to put your uh, 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 ohm, okay, and it is um, failure rate is also one in uh, uh, that five uh, five hundred, okay. But it is uh, you know that if somebody has infection, uh, active infection, then uh, we don't recommend, okay. But you can use it up to five to uh, five years, okay. So okay. this is, yeah, and another, there is another also procedure that is, which is, you know, the plant, implant. So you know, that means to put in your arm. So this is failure rate is very low also, one in 2000, the failure rate. Okay. okay. But as you don't like, but I can give you the information leaflet for all of this, uh, you know, the contraception. And uh, you can take your time and uh, think about that and let us know. Or you can, uh, uh, if you like, I can just, uh, you, you, you can ask me and you can decide which one you like. So what do you think? Okay, doctor. I will think about that, doctor. No problem. Okay. Thank you. I'll give the patient information leaflet and I'll inform my consultant also. You can discuss with him. 
so if you have any question you can ask me okay thank you thank you thank you dr salma thank you yeah, very much uh, you did good in this task you cover uh, uh, a lot of point which is relevant really but um, you miss uh, uh, also a lot of point that is very important in this task uh, so from the start your communication is good uh, greet and introduce yourself in the start and confirm the identity and check the purpose of the meeting the patient here uh, this angry patient uh, take care of this point this angry patient and she wanted to take you she wanted to hesitate yourself this I, I feel that you are trust in yourself and are you are self-confidence and I'm angry now because you don't you don't offer for uh, don't offer strategy for me so I wanted to shake your confidence I wanted to uh, shake your confidence and your trust in yourself so I I wanted to take you out of this when I as uh, I told you, doctor, don't tell me, don't uh, ask me or uh, by my name, uh, by my name. Please meet yourself. Uh, I, I told you to mention Miss Miss Wilson. Okay. The good thing is that you you didn't you you didn't you you your hesitate your confidence uh, didn't hesitate. It. Okay. So uh, uh, you was also trust in yourself. No problem at all. Sorry, I'm so sorry, Miss Wilson okay and you come again to the consultation this can happen in the exam take care and the role player some candidate may feel that why the role player do this with me why i, I, I am not good uh, why she did that uh, with me no she is instructed to do that she is instructed to uh, try to shake to shake the pay, uh, the, the the candidate confidence try to shake his trust in herself so he, she wanted to take you out of the consultation. So your your performance was good, okay, to come again to the consultation. Uh, uh, what again? Uh, you, 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 you didn't cover a lot of point really. Uh, when uh, the patient uh, asked you to, mean, to why she want, you wanted to offer, uh, you don't offer for me sterilization, why, 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 like that. You come to explain for her the rationale behind the don't, don't, not offering her the sterilization. But you forget a lot of point in the, in, in the, in the information gathering. After finish the consultation of the patient, you give her the rationale why you didn't offer for her the sterilization. You have to come again from the start. You have to come again from the start. So from the start, what what will be in the start? Recovery. You, so you have to ask the patient about her recovery. The patient is now in the ward just after surgery to have an ectopic pregnancy. To this consider the patient safety to ask about I the recovery. Sorry, sorry, doctor. I asked. You ask about the recovery. Being... Yeah, after operation, how are you? Uh... Mr. Simpson, and is there any pain? And uh, is there any uh, anything you want to share? That any any complication? Good, sir. good, very good. If you ask about the recovery, okay, very good. Then come again to the history of the present illness. As you know, we usually start with our sheet with history of the present illness. So could you tell me what happened? Could you tell me what happened? Why you have this ectopic? Uh, what happened when you come to the hospital? Like that. To ask about the event she will say yes doctor this was unplanned pregnancy and i feel some pain and bleeding and i about to faint when i came to the hospital they said that, that i have an ectopic pregnancy and they, they offer surgery for me i told them to do sterilization before the surgery like that so ask about the event what happened okay please mute yourself again very good so uh, don't uh, forget to ask about the history of the present illness. You ask about the obstetric history. Very good. Uh, could you tell me, have you ever been pregnant before that? Okay. You ask about when she saw, it told you that I have termination. You ask in details about termination. Was it for personal reason? Any communication? Any complication at all? Blood group is important because if she has a tubic pregnancy and she is RH negative, she may need an anti, uh, anti-D. Okay, so if you ask about the blue group, also it will be uh, very good. So the one, the thing I wanted to stress here, when the patient want from you to give for her the consultation, for, give for her the explanation, okay, you have you have to come now to explain for her, or you can say, 
Mary, I totally understand your concern. And in a moment, I will address your concern. I will answer all your question. But if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you some question to know more about you in the start. Is it okay? She will say, okay, doctor. So you will again start by information gathering. Again, when the role player prompt you to give her explanation about the test result or uh, about the consultation, you have two options, either to go directly to explain for her or to excuse, make excuse. And yes, I totally understand your concern. And in a moment, I will explain this for you. But if you don't mind, I wanted to ask you some question to know more about you. And they come to uh, go through your template, ask about the recovery, the history of the present illness, like that, like that, like that. Okay. Uh, regarding again to the communication, Dr. Salma, your tone of voice, I want from you to to change your tone of voice during the consultation. When the patient said, I am struggling with my children, uh, I don't want to think about pregnancy anymore. Yes, I totally understand your concern. Your tone of voice below. I'm so sorry to hear that, like that. Okay. Also, when the patient said, I have epilepsy and, 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 and I took some medication, I'm so sorry to hear that. Like, sympathy is very important and non-verbal communication, your facial expression is also very important in this task. You draw for the patient, very good in the communication with the patient, you negotiate with the patient to check understanding, give information, small chunks, this was very good, really in the patient uh, communication, you give the patient to patient information leaflet, it is also very good. Regarding to the information gathering, as I mentioned, you miss only the history of the present illness to ask about the event, okay, what happened, could you tell me what happened? Okay, you missed to ask about the blood group. If you ask about the blue blood group also, it will be very good. Uh, regarding to the sexual history, okay, because this, uh, this is a patient, okay, you ask about, you, you, you ask about the, uh, the contraception, you ask about the, uh, the, you put stress on the condom. Uh, yes, condom can protect you from catching sexual transmit infection, but it is not reliable method of contraception like that, okay? Okay. Uh, then uh, uh, the surgical history, you ask the social history, support at home, okay, and uh, the drug, the, the smoking, family history, all the, the remaining history covered. So only two points to try to focus, history of the present illness and blood group. Okay, regarding to the patient safety, uh, uh, you didn't miss a, a large point in the patient safety uh, except the uh, implant. The implant will be not suitable for this patient. Okay, take care because she take an uh, enzyme inducer. And as you know, three option only will be suitable for the patient take enzyme inducer. This patient take carbamazine, as mentioned here. Okay, the patient told you that I take levetiracetam and carbamaz carbamazine. So this is enzyme, enzyme inducer, so the implant will be not suitable for her. Okay. So uh, you have to cover this point and uh, uh, the implant will not be suitable for the patient. Okay, you, uh, when you explain for the hair, the long acting reversible contraception, the LARC, you didn't touch, I think you didn't touch the Dibuprovera, Dibuprovera, the injection, because this patient also has a needle phobia and she may, she may uh, tell you, doctor, I, I, no, no, doctor, I, I don't want any needle injection. I have a needle phobia. So you have to explore this point also when you come to explain for here the lark. As you know, the lark is four options is the coil or the copper coil or the melina, and the implant and the bovir. The implant will be not suitable at all. Okay, and the, uh, the patient will have needle phobia and she, so the Dibu Provera will be not suitable for the patient. So the coil and the marina, and you have to negotiate with the patient regarding the two options. Okay, so this is regarding to the patient safety. Uh, your applied knowledge about the sterilization was uh, good. Okay, you give here some pros and some cons regarding the sterilization. Okay, but if you put also more stress on the uh, uh, cones of the ster uh, sterilization, the side effect of the sterilization, uh, like uh, the failure rate, and if it failed, it may be at risk of ectopic pregnancy. The reversal of sterilization will be difficult, not guaranteed to be founded by the NHS, not protect her from sexual transmitted infection. Like in other surgery, okay, she may... Um, she, uh, uh, there is some risks during the surgery, like bowel injury, bladder injury, and like that, like that. 
regarding the rationale about why we will not offer the patient this sterilization your 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 rationale was very good your explanation was very good okay because we don't recommend to do this sterilization in the emergency situation or pregnancy stress times like termination like deliveries like salpingectomy because there is a higher risk of the regret and also the patient is young young woman I, uh, she is 26 years old so if the sterilization done before the age of the surgery is a high rate of regret okay also there will be a, should be a reasonable time to take the consent before the surgery this is the rationale why we don't to offer the sterilization for this patient so this is the the good point and the weak point in your uh, performance dr salma thank you very much so let's go to the suggested model of answer thank you very uh, much Ali, thank, to you. Give thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Ali or Dr. Salma, one of the senior doctors in the clinic today. May you confirm your name and age, please? She will say yes, doctor. Um, uh, I am, uh, uh, what is her name? Daniel Wilson. Uh, how would you like me to call you? She said, uh, Miss Wilson, fine, doctor. Hello, Miss Wilson. I understand that you are here today or you just have a surgery for an ectopic pregnancy. Am I right? She will say, yes, doctor. I'm so sorry for that. How do you feel right now? Do you have any pain in your tummy? Any bleeding from down below? Did you start to walk? Did you open your bowel? Like that, okay? This is how to ask about uh, the uh, recovery. Uh, Ms. Wilson, any expectation or concern from our meeting today? Yes, she will say, yes, doctor. Why you don't offer sterilization for me at the same time? I will never get pregnant anymore. I requested this before the surgery, like that, like that. Okay. Now, here, you come to give her, you, you may come to give her the rationale behind uh, uh, not offering her sterilization, or you can delay this till the end of the uh, information gathering. Uh, Ms. Walson, I totally understand your concern. In a moment, I will exp explain the rationale for not sterilizing you, but I wanted to ask you some question to know more about you. Is it okay? Okay, and I feel this is better not to hesitate or you may forget some point and you may miss some point. So I prefer this, this uh, option to address her concern. Yes, I totally understand your concern I, and I can see how angry you are. And in a moment, I will explain for you uh, the rationale why I'm not sterilizing you. But I want to ask you some question to know more about you. Is it okay? She will say, okay, doctor. Okay. You may ask it about the recovery. How do you feel right now? Do you have any pain in your tummy? Did you start to move around? Did you open your bowel? Change the tone of your voice. Okay. Could you tell me what happened? She will say, yes, doctor, this was unplanned. I surprised to be to be, uh, to know that I'm pregnant. I have been in my tummy and my tummy and some bleeding and I am about to faint. When I come to the hospital, they said that I have an ectopic and offer surgery for me. Okay. And I understand that you have three children. Could you tell me more about these pregnancies? She will say, yes, doctor, I have three vaginal deliveries and two termination. Any problem so far? She will say, no, doctor. Okay, was it personal? Were it for personal reason? Yes, doctor. Okay, what is your blood group? She will say O positive or like that. Okay, and could you tell me more about your period? What about your cervical smear and the contraception? Okay, because this unplanned pregnancy, so you have a put stress on the contraception. She said condom. Yes, condom is good to protect you from catching sexual transmitted infection, but you have to use a reliable method of contraception. Am I clear so far? She will say yes, doctor. Are you following your GP for any medical problem? This patient already has epilepsy and she is on levetiracetam and the carbamazepine, which is enzyme inducer. So put this in your mind. Okay. Also, she may have a depression and on fluxity. How well controlled? When was the last consultation with your specialist, the doctor? This will be considered to patient safety. Okay. Any surgery? She will say, yes, doctor. May have this termination or and don't have surgery at all. No problem. Are you somewhere right now? Support at home. Yes, doctor. Is he supportive? Sometimes he may help in the home, doctor. Okay. Any allergies at all? Do you smoke? Do you drink alcohol? Any family history? Uh, do you want me uh, to tell me about? Okay. Do you want to, to add anything? Thank you for sharing this information with me today. Then you come to, explain, to examine the patient in the presence of chaperone after uh, consent and after hand hygiene. 
examine her pulse blood pressure temperature, examine her pain for any, uh, sorry, examine her tummy for any pain, any distension. Then uh, uh, you come to explain for her, uh, her condition. Mary or Miss Wilson, you have a condition called ectopic pigments. Have you ever heard about that? Here, the role player will prompt you to go to the sterilization. Yes, doctor, I know. I know, and they explain for me what is ectopic pregnancy, but I want to ask you why they, you couldn't offer me sterilization at the same time. I never want to get pregnant. I requested that before surgery. Yes, Miss Wilson, I totally understand. I, I can see how angry you are. Um, but if you give me some time to explain this for you, Ms. Wilson, sterilization is permanent method of contraception, so you shouldn't think about that unless you are sure 100%. You, you don't want children anymore in the future. Am I clear so far? She said, yes, doctor. I, I don't want children in the future. Okay. Here you come to explain for here what is the pros and what is the cons of the sterilization. After sterilization, you will not need any contraception anymore unless for seven days and your hormones will be not be affected at all. Any patient want to have anything, you have to explain for her the good thing first, and after that, the bad thing, okay? This is how to gain the patient in your side. When the patient, for example, come to ask about home birth, she, for example, she has a big fibroid, or she have previous cesarean section, and she want to have home birth. You, don't, you will not come immediately to explain for her the side effect or the complication that may happen, no. Explain for her why, why she wanted to have home bears. Then the good thing in the home bears, yes, I totally understand. And I, I, I understand that home bears will be very good because you will be surrounded by a lot of people uh, that you know, and you will uh, deliver your baby in a, a calm place, and you will start breastfeeding immediately. But I, I, am, I am so sorry, or I am afraid it will be not suitable for you. Why? One, two, three. So when you come to explain the patient, something uh, which will not be suitable for her, give her the good thing first, then after that, explain the bad the bad thing or the complication that may happen. Don't jump immediately to the complication, no. Start by the good thing, sterilization. After sterilization, you will not need any contraception anymore, unless only seven days. Your hormone will be not affected and your period also will be not affected. But, but here is the rationale. We don't recommend this sterilization at the time of the pregnancy stress, like termination, delivery, and salpingectomy. Also, uh, you are a young woman, and there is high risk to regret if this surgery is done under the age of 30. Am I clear so far? Also, this was an emergency situation, and you have to sign a consent before the surgery with reasonable time. Am I clear? She will say, okay, doctor. Also, sterilization, Ms. Wilson, has some side effects or some communication, like about in one in 200 women, this, the tubes may rejoin again, and this puts you at risk to have an ectopic pregnancy, which happened outside the womb, which is very risky. Also, reversal of sterilization will be always difficult and not guaranteed to be found by the NHS. Sterilization will not protect you from sexual transmitted infection, so you have to use condom. In Okay, this like in a surgery, there is a, some complication that may happen like bowel injury, bladder injury, and the bleeding. Am I clear so far? She will say, yes, doctor. Ms. Wilson, we have a different method of contraception called the LARC, which give you a, a long-standing reversible contraception, and you can get pregnant once you stop it. Okay, you can use any one of them till the age of the 30, and we can discuss the sterilization again. If you don't mind, I can give you some information about them. She will say, okay, doctor, here you will explain for her the lark, the coil, Ribu Provera, and Marina. Take care, the implant will be not suitable for the patient. The coil, which is uh, uh, put in your womb and prevent the pregnancy by preventing the egg to be fertilized by the sperm. The failure rate is about one in 200, like sterilization. You can keep it for five to 10 years. Uh, but it may make your period heavier or longer than normal. Am I clear so far? Yes. We have another option called the Bovira injection that act by preventing the ovary to produce the egg and also make the mucus plug of the neck of your womb thick, which prevents the ascending of the sperm. 
uh, uh, this uh, uh, failure rate about four in one thousand, and it can act for thirteen weeks, but it make you, may may make your period irregular or stop. No, doctor, I don't want uh, this injection at all. I have a needle phobia. Okay, so we have another option called Marina, which is a coil contain hormone progesterone but in your womb, and it act by preventing the implantation of the fertilized egg in your womb. Its failure rate is two up in 1,000 and can act for five years. Your period may become lighter or stop. Is it harmful, doctor, to not have a period any, uh, anymore? No, at all. This side effect is reversible. Okay. Okay. She will say, okay, doctor, I wanted to have this type. Again, implant will not suitable for this patient. Also, you may explain for her vasectomy if the partner accepts that. So we have also another option called the vasectomy, which is safer and quicker. And the failure rate is much less, one, uh, one in 2,000. Can be done in outpatient clinic in 15 minutes where the tubes of your partner, which carries the spur, will be closed or tied. Okay. Uh, she will think, okay, doctor, I will think about that. I will think about that. Give me time to uh, uh, to discuss this with my partner, like that, like that, like that. Okay, don't forget to, to put a stress on the ectopic pregnancy. She may need urine pregnancy test after three weeks. Okay. Uh, this inhibition to a surgical management salvingectomy will offer urine pregnancy test after three weeks. And also, if she may come pregnant again, she may need an ultrasound again at six to eight weeks to confirm the location. Does it make any sense? She will say, yes, doctor. Okay, now I can arrange another appointment with your uh, GB to have this Marina, uh, and I will arrange another appointment to discuss this again. Ms. Wilson, uh, using the condom is very important to prevent you uh, to prevent or to protect you to have sexual transmitted infection. Okay, okay, thank you. Like that. Okay, all your comments. Yes, and the message, very good, all your information, very good. Uh, Dr. Jane, for example, said that uh, uh, esterization not recommended in emergency situation and also in the patient under the age of 30, yes, high rate of the, or high chance to regret, yes, very good. Uh, Dr. Asma said, esterization consent two weeks back, Okay, so reasonable time. Uh, Manicam, Dimba, Dimrovera, and the ICD best for hair. No, but this patient has needle phobia. Okay, so uh, your all your message or your uh, uh, information are reasonable for this task, really. Okay, we will stop here today. Thank you for all of you. Uh, the time ran quickly, really. I was uh, uh, arranged to have more tasks, but the time ran quickly. So, inshallah, we'll arrange another time, another uh, session to discuss more and more tasks. Thank you for all of you. If you have any question, if you have any query, please send in the, our group steps for MRSOG. Uh, I hope that you, inshallah, will pass the exam. Thank you.